Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Oh yes, today is a lovely, wonderful, sunny summer's day here in England. And I am so delighted because I like the blue skies and it's doing wonders for my English country garden. It also makes my spirits rise as well. I love the sunshine, don't you? Now, I've been given an invitation by Carlos J. He made, wants me to make a flight between Guayaquil, which is S-E-G-U, and Quito, which is S-E-Q-M. Now, he said that after watching the flight that I made a couple of weeks ago between La Paz and Cusco, he wrote, Now that you are visiting South America, can you fly to Quito? Maybe Guayaquil to Quito. He said that there are some very impressive scenery approaching Mariscal Sucre Airport. And of course, he's right. I remember that very well. Now, our starting point is Guayaquil, and it is a port city on the coast, and it is the gateway to the famous Galapagos Islands. Back in the 60s, this is how I remember Guayaquil. Quito, on the other hand, is Ecuador's capital and it is high up in the foothills of the Andes and is 2,850 meters high or 9,350 feet above sea level. When I flew into the old Mariscal Sucre Air International Airport at Quito, I was amazed by the magnificent scenery surrounding the old city. Now here is the view that I had on final approach. And here is what an aircraft landing looked like from the streets of Quito. You know, then the population of Quito was about 300,000 back in the late 60s, and life was a lot slower than it is today. Constructed on the foundations of an ancient Incan city, Quito is known for its well-preserved colonial center, rich with 16th and 17th century churches. And Quito is also surrounded by volcanoes. Cotopaxi is the closest one and at 19,347 feet high is the second highest in Ecuador. And yes, that is perpetual snow you see on that mountain. And it is, yes, right on the equator. How about that? Oh, and did I mention Cotopaxi is also active volcano. It's still active. Today, the population of Quito has grown to, what, nearly 2 million people now. And it is a very healthy, bustling town. It also has a new airport, and that's the one that we are going to be flying into today. Now, the route will take us close to the three highest peaks and volcanoes in Ecuador. Chimborazo, which is 6,310 meters or 
20,697 feet tall. Cotopaxi, 5,911 meters or 19,388 feet high. And Kayambe, 5,790 meters tall or 18,991. Now, Cotopaxi and Kayambe are both still active volcanoes. And here is a map showing all the locations of the volcanoes in Ecuador. Our route is going to take us past several of those as we climb and go north. The new Quito airport elevation is 7,910 feet. Now I've got some excellent scenery for this particular trip. The Guayaquil scenery, which is S-E-G-U, that airport scenery is made by Sierra Sim. And Quito, S-E-Q-M, airport scenery is made by Flightbeam. So we're going to have a treat with two very excellent sceneries. And I did check, there are several flights between Guayaquil and Quito, and I've picked uh, Avianca flight AV1625. Avianca flight AV1625 or GLG1625 if you want to put that into flight aware. So that's going to be our route today. Pretty exciting, isn't it? And you know, I haven't been back to Ecuador since the 60s, so it's going to be interesting to see what we make of it today. So thank you, Carlos. I do appreciate this. Muchísimas gracias para invitarme a visitar Ecuador, Iquito y Guayaquil. So, if you're ready, are you ready, Carlos? Then let's pop over into pre-flight and see what we can find, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and I'm looking at Avianca Ecuador Flight 1625. Here you can see the information. This particular one landed over 20 hours ago. Took off from here and landed in Mariscal Sucre. Apparently it was on time taking off and landing, so we shall have to do the same thing. <laughs> Checking out the route, here you can see the route was pretty straightforward and it looked like the cruising altitude when they reached it was 23,000 feet. Taxi time at departure was one minute. Wow. And taxi time, however, in Quito was 21 minutes, according to this. So that's going to be quite a little run on the taxiways. So that is where we're going to go and the route that we're going to be taking. All right, let's have a look at the wind. Now here's where it gets interesting. Guayaquil, here you can see this, it's on the, this is a port city, here you can see the estuary coming in and you can see everything is coming in, sweeping in off the Pacific Ocean in that direction. So wind is 230 degrees at 9 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, clouds broken at 2,000 feet, 10,000 feet, Temperatures 22 degrees, Q and H 1010. Okay, so slightly below standard uh, air pressure, but not too bad. But it's this minimum VFR that uh, is telling us that we may have some visibility issues. Looking at the runway. And here's the Guayaquil Airport, the new one. It looks like we'll be departing then on that runway. 
which would be 2-1. So we'll be departing, if everything is going to plan, on runway 2-1. This seems to be where all the aircraft are departing from. This is the international uh, departure point right here. So we'll be at one of these stands. Not sure which one yet, but we'll, we'll check that out when we get in. Here is Quito, here's the town, and there's the airport located right there. You can see the wind is blowing pretty much from the east and not at a very fast clip. It says here wind is 130 degrees at 4 knots, ceiling and visibility is okay. Temperature is 7 degrees. Well, this is high up, you know. Q&H 01024. So there's high pressure over this area. All right, if it's 130, well, then it may well be that we'll be landing on this one if the weather is coming in that direction, but we shall have to see. But this is the new airport. Oh, by the way, if I just slide over here, do you see this in the middle of the city? This is the old airport right here, right in the middle of all the built up area. Look at that. And of course, today it's closed and it is a park today. It's just one very large park in the middle of Quito. So that's where the old one is. And there's the new one over here. All right, let's go into Simbrief. We are Ryanair. We are 186. We are departing from... SEGU and we're going to go to SEQM. There's the alternate. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. We'll put in our airframe and here's our registration. It says scheduled flight time, that's door to door if you will, is one hour, 10 minutes, departure runway 21, arrival runway 18, okay. I'm gonna leave the altitude as auto to see what happens. Passengers, of course, we are full, and we are carrying, of course, champagne and caviar, as we always do. <laughs> and here is the very simple route right there. And route distance, it says, is 169 nautical miles. So looking at the route, here it is. Guayaquil, all the way straight up. And by the way, this is the area of all of the uh, volcanoes and high peaks. And there is Quito and coming into land in this direction. This is the alternate. This is uh, Latacunga and that's where the alternate landing will be should anything go pear-shaped. All right, let's save this and let's generate the flight plan and see what we get. Well, here we've got the information there's the origin, there's the destination alternate, and we're going to be flying at flight level 240. Airtime is 37 minutes, block fuel is right here. Routing, no remarks. Going down here, there's Ryanair 186. There is our flight cruising altitude, and there is the, the routing. The SELT is our alternate. Here we go, cost index six. We'll need that information. We'll need the average wind for our cruise. 
right here is our block fuel reserves 2.57 2 2057 kilograms just a little over two metric tons and 2.1 metric ton for the trip and the taxi here's the routing that it's given us and I'll be posting this in the description box below the video. Here we are, page 8, and this gives us the descent information. We'll need to know the information for flight level 200, that's 20,000 feet. There's the wind direction and the wind speed. And it's giving us minus 9 for temperature. And at 15,000 feet, there we are. There's the wind speed and temperature. And it says there we've got 3 degrees of temperature. At 10,000 feet, there's the wind direction and speed. And the temperature increases. Now, significant weather for the area. Here's our route. And these little things that you see here, these are volcanoes and they are active and probably spewing a little bit of smoke out. It looks like there may be a weather front moving in coming from the east, so we'll have to look out for that. Going to 24 thousand feet here's our here's our route and it looks like we're going to have cross winds coming in sweeping in across here until we make our approach into Quito up here but nothing too significant the winds are not that strong so it shouldn't impact on our fuel too much this, of course, is the interesting bit. This is the vertical profile. Here we are. Sigu is starting down here. This is Guayaquil. And on the sea, uh, sea level, climbing up to top of climb, going across to the descent. And then look at this. Now we have to go in between the mountains to get into Quito. So we've got some very high peaks around the vicinity that we'll have to watch out for. But there's the elevation of the runway up here. And pretty high up. Pretty high up. Okay. Let's go into Navigraph Charts. All right. Click Flights. New Flight from SimBrief. And we'll bring in the latest flight. Clicking on the origin, we bring up the airport and the airport parking. We'll be somewhere up in this particular area. So we've got the international is at this area and domestic is at the lower section. So if we were to make a choice, perhaps down here around about 15 or 16, may be a good place to be. This is the departure SID. So we'll make sure that this is also put down at the bottom. We'll pin it. Looks like we'll be taking off here and making a swing around. Okay, straightforward. See, here's the here's the route. You can see that right there. And then joining the flight route going north. Looking at our destination. We'll need the airport and we'll need the gates. Uh, we'll be coming in probably on one of these. 
that's the that's the what we what we think all right and it's saying that we'll be coming in on runway 18 so we'll be looking then at ILS or localizer let's have a look at this one and see what it does let's see what we've got for approach if we do the ILS runway approach 18 and and if we click on QIT well then it's taking us around and bringing us on this so it looks like that's the ILS Yankee one so I'm going to pin that one and I'm going to now bring that over the top so this will be our route when we get in here we'll hit the QIT VOR here and then make our swing and come in on a right base and then a final to land at Quito in that direction all right we have our information we we know now what we are doing <laughs> at least we think we do right <laughs> all right I'm going to close all of that up and there it is there's our route all right let's go on into the cockpit and get ourselves started shall we Ah, oh, there you are, Carlos. Do come on in. Siéntate in the first officer's seat over there and bienvenidos a Ryanair 186. 186. We are here in SEGU, which is Guayaquil. And this particular scenery is made by Sierra Sim and it is very very detailed very accurate indeed the weather is overcast and I should mention that since we are just slightly below the equator this is technically winter here <laughs> but as I say it's slightly below so if we were slightly above then it would be summer it's just one of those oddities because we are so close to the equator which is why it's called Ecuador <laughs> so here we are and it is as I say cloudy but clear enough for a flight and I don't think there's going to be any problem we'll have to see just how good the visibility is once we climb up to our altitude this particular scenery is made by Sierra Sim. Sierra Sim made this scenery. And I'm showing 25, 26, 25, 25, 26 frames per second. And that is on three very large 4K screens. And I'm using full UHD. So I'm sparing no expense for this flight for you, Carlos. Right. Then, first thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the battery, make sure that we have enough voltage there, turn on the fuel pumps, and let's get the APU started because we do need to get the air conditioning running. It's... Um, in England, it is sunny and warm, and we are somewhere in the vicinity of about 25 or 26 today. So definitely, we would want air conditioning if I were to step outside of the simulator. <laughs> so there it is. There's the e engine gas temperature is rising now, and as soon as it comes back down and stabilizes, I'm going to look for this light to go on and when it does that is when I can then uh, coming up and we now have 
115 volts. So we're looking good. So I'm going to turn on the IRS to get our GPS done. Turn on the galley. Turn on the emergency exit lights. Fasten seat belts. No smoking. Attendance. Uh, two drinks, please. Uh, well, you never know. We might just get it. Then over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. I'm going to leave the probes off for the moment. I'm turning on the electrical hydraulics. Forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down. And then I'm going to go over here and turn on the APU bleed. Turn on the packs and the isolation valve. And there it goes, it is now stabilizing. There's that rush of air. And that is going in, and we are now having air conditioning. The outside air temperature here is recorded as 22 degrees. So we need some air conditioning. I have a thermometer down there to show me what the inside temperature is here in our simulator. And it also says it is 22. So that's the reason for the air conditioning. Good. So far, so good. And now I'm going to turn on the steady light so that everybody down there knows that we are in the cockpit getting ready to go. Now we need to go in and program the FMC. Now I should tell you that I've been around, I've kicked the tires. I've washed the windows and everything is absolutely perfect. So, going in now to the FMC, position initialization, and we are starting out from SEGU. So, SEGU, and we are at gate 1-6. So, I'm going to put 1-6 in there, and it came up, and I'm going to push that. And then, there we are, our GPS is now set. Go to the root, and again we put in SEGU. Destination is SEQM, so SE and QM. We are, of course, Ryanair, RYR, and we are 186. So we put that in there. Go to next page, and here we go and look at our flight plan to see what it gives us. So, we are going to depart direct first to GYB. So, GYB, GYB, and there it is, Guayaquil is the top one. And then we take the Gulf 675, Gulf 675, and that will take us then to QIT. QIT, and that is our flight plan. So activate that, execute, go to fix, and that it would be SEQM. And with Q, Q and M. And then I'm going to need a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle, and a 30 mile circle. <clears throat> now I go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level in Ecuador is set by air traffic control. So I'm going to leave the transition level as it is. But we will need to have the values for three, these three elevations. So altitudes of 200, 150, and 100. Q&H at our destination is 1026. And then I'm going to go to page 8 of our flight briefing. And I'm going to put in 
For 200, it is 66 at 13. So 66 at 13. For 150, it is 96 at 21. 96 at 21. And for 10,000 feet, it is 122 at 5. So 122 at 5. And then execute that. Departures. Now here's where we need to listen in to ATIS and find out what it is that the airport conditions are like. And there is no ATIS at Guayaquil according to this, so we're just going to have to tune straight into the ground control and get our clearance. And we are going to depart to the north. Guayaquil ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi north, departure. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 21, using taxiway, Bravo Alpha, contact tower on 118.3, wind ready. Taxi, hold short runway 21, via taxiway, Bravo Alpha, Ryanair 186. Well, we have our taxi clearance and it's going to take us to runway Two, one. And that's what we were expecting. And we're taking the GYB3 departure. And we'll execute that. Go to the departures and arrivals. We are planning to come in on runway 18. So that would be, let's see, ILS localizer Yankee so ILS localizer Yankee and the transition is QIT so we'll put that in go to legs and now we're going to have a look at the plan to see how it how it works all right I'm going to switch now to plan so this changes this and now I'm just going to step through each one of these and checking out that our route is good all the way through. There's the top of the turn coming in. Look at that, coming straight down right onto the active runway. Perfect. Everything's working out. So I switch back now to good. We've got a good route. So now I'm going to put the weather onto this. Double click on data, I'm going to put terrain on yours, double click on data. I'm going to turn the TCAS on. I'm also going to bring up the stairs and close the door because our self-loading cargo is now on board. That's the motor for the stairs that you hear. And the stairs are nicely tucked away. Right, now that we have that done, I'm now going to program this. We're going to be flying at 24,000 feet on our cruise today. So I'm going to put 24,000 in here. I'm also going to put 24,000 in here for our cruising altitude and the pressurization. And the airport elevation is 7,900. So I'm going to put in 7,900 into the landing altitude. So that when we open the door, it doesn't pop everybody's ears. There we go, 7,900. That's got that on. We'll be departing on runway 21. So the that will be course 213. So I'm going to spin this back to 213. I'll make yours 213 as well. Is that okay, Carlos? And this one also. Good, got that. I'm turning on the your damper. The flight continuity light went out. We're looking good on that. All right. We're now ready to complete the, the route and perform the initialization. The planned fuel today is 
the reserves are 2,057, and to that we add the trip and taxi of 2,186. That comes to 4,243, or in our case, that would be 4.2. 4.2 is the rounded out figure. The reserves, as I said, is 2,057, so that would be 2.1. 2.1 into reserves. Cost index is 6. Double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything there. We're going to be flying at flight level 240. Our cruise wind today is average wind is 127 at 11. So 127 and 11. <coughs> Transition altitude is flight level 180, put that in, execute that. Go to N1 limit, we'll take the 22 degrees, so we'll just do a slash and 22 and that makes it go bold. Go to takeoff, we are flaps 10 and we just double click that to bring in the center of gravity and the value for the trim wheel, which is 4.78. One click on each of these gives us the V1, the rotation, and the liftoff of V2 is 144. So put 144 in here. There we go. Flight director on my side and over there. V now button. LNAV button, we have green lights on both, so arm the auto throttle. And now I'm going to put the VOR1 and VOR2 on. Now the VOR2, that is going to be the QIT VOR at 115.3, so 115.3. And the ILS is 111.1. So ILS 111.1. So now the VOR1 down here is our ILS frequency. The VOR2 QIT frequency is over there. And it's already picking up QIT and it says that the distance measuring equipment is 151 DME miles. So, it's already in operation. Good. All right, now that we've got that, I'm going to switch the RTO to well, the anti-skid. Just check that everything is looking good there. Everything is okay here. Right, we'll do the... Fuel is all checked, windows locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP program bugs all done, CDU pre-flight is complete, rudder air alarm trim is premium zero, taxi takeoff briefing, we are going to back out put our nose to the right and our tail to the left. Anti-collision light is now going on. So we're ready now. Everybody's on board. They're all getting served their complimentary drinks. The outside air temperature is still 22 degrees, but inside here, the temperature has now dropped to 20 degrees as this wonderful air conditioning is in operation. I've now got the Navigraph charts active and you can see that to my right over here. Good. I'm going to adjust my seat now and get myself ready because the next thing I've got to do is ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback so that we can start the engines and move to the active. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready for pushback. Tail to the left. Ready, spread 
brake, please. Parking brake is released. I'm now turning off the air conditioning packs. Brakes released. So that we can put all of the energy into spinning the engines. Now, which engine do you want to start today first, Carlos? Number one and number two. Number one, all right, we'll start number one. I'm switching then to generator one and turning the engines on. Over here, the engine start valve has opened and here you can see the N2 is spinning up. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. There it is. And now I'm going to be looking for the engine gas temperature to... Ah, uh, there it goes. It's igniting. Look at that. We're getting a good start there. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out next. There it did. And we're getting a good build up here. Ah, oh, yes, that's working very nicely. Should hear the engines any minute. There they go. And I'm looking up here for 115 volts to verify that we have, there they are. Now switching to engine number two, turning it on. Start valve has opened. N2 is building up over here. Climbing very nicely. And when this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. Pushback complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Now the set. engine gas temperature is building up very nicely. Look at that. Temperature is building up very good. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It has. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your right. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And we're getting a good ignition all the way through there. All right, looking good, looking very good. I'm looking now for 115 volts to show up here. There it is. And as soon as this tick mark has gone up, which it just did, so now I can switch to the electricity coming from the main engines, turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Now I can turn on the runway taxi lights and let's get ourselves a check here. Generators are on. Probe heat is now on. Left and right. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valve check. Engine stop levers idle detent. Flight deck door is closed and locked. Recall is checked. Flight controls check. Flaps. We need to go to Flaps 10. And there we go. The flaps are extending. And we have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct on that. Auto brake RTO. Speed brake lever down detent. Ground equipment is clear. So, all of that is now good. Verify the takeoff speeds. There is one change. Go to 145 on there. Right. Oh, I got to take some video of this. Now, here's the this is the airport scenery of Guayaquil, and this is the domestic scene, domestic and the international terminal building over there. And we're just, we've just moved out into the main taxi area. And over there is where the active runway is. There is grass detail. Look at all the detail, really great here. And yes, it is a cloudy, cloudy day here in Guayaquil. Okay, break off. Everybody sitting down. Everybody, I hope. Okay. 
And now we'll just give a boost to get the power going here. And we'll move out towards the active runway. You can follow our position on the Navigrad charts just here. Now the elevation of this airport is 13 feet above sea level. 13, not very high. So we have great density altitude to get a good quick lift off when we taxi and start our run down the runway. It will be a different story when we get of course into Quito because Quito is nearly 8,000 feet up in elevation. So the density altitude there will be a little bit different. Right, we'll make our turn here on to Bravo and then we swing around to Alpha. Stick your hand out, would you please, Carlos? Ah, thank you. <laughs> And we'll make the turn here. And then we'll go left here, making sure that nothing is coming. Oh, good detail there of, uh, of the skyline of Guayaquil. Very, very nice. And then we'll make our left turn. And as soon as we get around the corner to the right, I'll contact the tower to get our clearance to take off. Beautiful detail, this compound here with all kinds of buses and vehicles in it. Very, very well put together. And Sierra Sim is the one that made this scenery. Little cloudy today, not much I can do about that I'm afraid, but... Alright, we're coming up to the whole short line. And we'll hold here, contact the tower. Guy Quill Tower, Ryanair 186, ready for touch and go at runway 21. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 21. Cleared for takeoff, runway 21, Ryanair 186. All right, we have our clearance. So, briefing is complete, engine bleeds are on. Engine start switches continuous, position light is strobe, cabin is secure. All lights are now on, starting the clock. Right, we'll move out into the active runway and make our departure. And we are full today once again. Every seat was sold out. It's all that complimentary champagne and caviar, you know, Carlos. That's what does it. Now line up on the center line. Okay, now advancing the power to N1. Power is consistent, toggle button push, and we are rolling. Very nice detail. Say one, rotate. Rotate. B2. B2. And we are going up. Right, 
I turn there we go now we're making our turn let me see if I can find something on the ground to, to film well there's quite a bit of cloud as we climb out here but you can see some parts of the coastline below, not as much as I would have hoped. Well, there it is. Ah, there's a little bit more that's we've broken out of the cloud at this point. Estuary is below us and we're climbing now on top.
enough uh, to drink back there? I am so glad to hear it because I do need help in landing at Quito. It's um, all of these mountains, they, they're all over the place and uh, I don't want to run into any of them now, do I? <laughs> now, we are within 30 miles of Quito, so I'm now going to tune in to the tower and get our landing instructions. So that would be... making 
our turn to intercept final when we make our turn to swing around onto base leg.
where the other one is but we are coming right down we're a little high we've got a little bit of a crosswind here so I'm going to have to adjust We're three white and one red. Two right, white and two red now. We're coming down. speed. Traffic. Traffic. Where? Approaching minimums. 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 We One are landing. 50. 40. 30. Where is the traffic? 20. 10. And reverse thrusters are on. A little off the center line, but we had a, a sudden crosswind there that was blowing me off. Well, I'll take the the next one, turning. One, eight, six, turn next All right, I'll turn the next taxiway where I, oh, there it is. And bringing up the flaps. Doing a quick clean up here. All right. Should be able to turn off just up here. Ryanair 186, turn next taxiway. They sound so in impatient, don't they? I don't know where that other aircraft came in. It said, you know, traffic, traffic, but I didn't see anything. It might have been a car, you never know. <laughs> All right, sticking my hand out. There we go. This is made by flight beam. Look at all the detail that they've got in this. And we'll find our way over to one of those parking areas. Look at the scenery here. You know you are quite right, Carlos. The scenery on the approach <laughs> was really, really good. And they've got coaches and plenty of uh, kamikazes wandering around. We'll have to watch out for those. All right, I'll go up here and swing around in there. Here we go. find out which uh, 
stand we can use in just a moment. Oh, we could go park right in front of the main terminal building there. What do you think? That would be a bit cheeky for Ryanair, but why not? Cargo terminal is over to our left. And here comes the kamikazes. Wouldn't you believe it? Go on, buzz off. I'll put right into this one right here, which is, let me just check, that is number one three. We're in stand 13. And we may just get in there before the kamikazes come back again. But there's where it says, Aeropuerto Internacional Mariscal Sucre de Quito. Y bienvenido. So there we are, we are at stand 13, parking brake is on, alright, taxi lights are all off, and as soon as the APU has cranked up here, Turning on the APU and shutting down. All right, let's do the galley off, 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 off. Okay, and windows off. The stairs are going down. TCAS is off, everything is off, cleanup is all complete. Right, fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, Carlos, that was a great flight, and the scenery, just as you promised, is magnificent. I mean, I remember coming in here, but back in the 60s, and, well, I suppose mountains are mountains. They seemed awfully high then, flying in a smaller aeroplane than a big jet, and, uh, but it was really a lot of fun to come in and, f and come into Quito with all of that scenery. It really is magnificent. Right. All of our passengers are all off and going through customs and immigration. And uh, <laughs> the wobbling, there must be all of that champagne that they had. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for the suggestion. I do appreciate it very much. And I will see you again on another flight. And for everyone else, I'll see you hopefully next week on a flight of Ryanair 186. Bye everybody!